Hi, my name is Steve Houston. Welcome back to my channel. It is Wednesday. We put videos up on Wednesday and Saturday. Now that we're past the 24-day, one video per day challenge that we did in July of 2024, we're back to a schedule of Wednesday, Saturday, Wednesday, Saturday. Wednesday is important that you're looking for the video because it's hump day, right? And you might find some value here you know, on the video for Wednesday to kind of get you through the rest of the week. And that's my goal, God willing, that we can do that for you because I know that I sometimes need it on a Wednesday too. So make sure the best way not to miss them is to subscribe, hit that bell notification so you get instantly notified. That's what YouTube said. It's really not instant, but we'll, uh, we'll go with those words just to satisfy them. But again, this week I want to share with you kind of a short video on how to avoid costly mistakes when you're selling mortgage station, final expense, life insurance, right? Again, there is no mortgage station or final expense policies. Mortgage station generally is term. Final expense generally is whole life because we want it for our whole life for final expenses. Today I want to kind of show you five tips, I believe, will help you in that process. So again, the question that I have to ask you is, if you watch this video for the first time, are you in the business of selling mortgage section, final expense, life insurance? And if so, avoiding costly mistakes, success killers in my opinion, business killers, is can you make significant impact on your success in this industry if you avoid these costly mistakes. So let's dive into some of the points. The first thing is mistake number one, relying on stats, graphs, all this material we can all get from various different IMOs, insurance websites, and completely overwhelm our clients with all these factual figures. And here's the bottom line. In my opinion, it could be, it's probably up for debate, but in my opinion, this is an emotional sale, not a logical sale. We're not selling cars, we're not selling Kirby vacuums. I used to do that in my early days. It may not make sense to that person logically, but if, they, if you connect an emotion to it, like for example, this is a product where it's a non-tangible in most cases. In most cases, they're doing something. They're making a decision for something they'll never ever see value in or not. They'll never see the results of their decisions in order for the insurance to pay out, unless you're talking about living benefits, they had to die. Right, so the decision they're making today is an emotional decision to take care of their family, their loved ones, their spouse, their kids. That's the bottom line is that I believe that we're selling on an emotional level and you have to attach an emotional object or emotional feeling to that decision. Here's the bottom line. So six things alone don't sell life insurance. Instead, you got to use real life stories and scenarios that connect your clients emotionally. Show them the concrete benefits of mortgage session or final expense insurance through relatable examples. Let's go on to mistake number two, which is not helping customers see the need. You got a confused customer scratching their head because they don't see the need because you have not attached that emotional need or problem in their lives. In other words, they could pass away tragically today and they're claiming not having the money to pay the basic necessities, house, cars, mortgage, schooling, upcoming things like weddings, colleges. Those are things you have to tie to it. And one of the things I use in my presentation still today, I came up with this many years ago, is, Jack and Jill, let me ask you a question. Jack, if you didn't come home tomorrow because of a heart attack, car wreck, again, tying something to it because it's possible for everybody, people can get in a car, car wreck if they're young, if they're older, they can get in a heart attack, right? So tie those things to it. So Jack and Jill, Jack, if you didn't come home tomorrow because of a heart attack or, or a car wreck, remember, you don't come home, but now there's your paycheck forever. So let me ask you a question that you can both think about. What does your finances look like 30 days from the day you pass away for your family? And that kind of puts them right in the present moment. Can that family survive without that spouse's paycheck for the rest of his life? or the rest of their lives. I use that, works really well, gets them in the moment. Don't assume your customers understand the importance of mortgage session or final expense without asking them probing questions to help them visualize the potential impact on their family's financial stability. Guide them towards recognizing the necessities of this coverage. Okay, so let's go on to number three, not listening. Many agents I find, they get nervous, they talk too much, 
I talk too much sometimes on these videos. Listening is key to understanding your client's unique situation. By actively listening, you can tailor your offerings, your products to meet their specific needs. So pay attention to their concerns and address them effectively. You gotta make sure that you write, I take notes. Let them see that you're listening, you're hearing, and you're internalizing what they're saying. Be engaged, be present in the moment, not thinking about what you're gonna say next, but listening and hearing what they're saying. So mistake number four, using jargon. Okay, this could be a very easy thing to fall, fall into. You can see that customer surrounded by all these insurance terms that they don't understand. Again, going back to my original point, a confused mind does nothing but shut down. It makes no decisions. That's where you get that, you know, let me think about it, let me do my research, and I'll get back to you. That kind of scenario takes place if you overwhelm them with ideas, right? So again, avoid overwhelming your clients with industry jargon. Speak in simple, clear language that resonates with them. Make sure that they grasp the benefits of mortgage insurance, final expense insurance, without getting lost in your financial terms. Okay, now, mistake number five to wrap this thing up is talking too much. Remember, selling is not just about pitching your product. Give your clients a space to express their needs and concerns. Strike a balance between sharing information and allowing them to voice their thoughts. Here's the bottom line. By steering clear of these mistakes, you can strengthen your approach to selling mortgage section final expense insurance. You know, it's about building trust. People buy from people that they like, know, and trust. So the more time you spend hearing, listening, learning, acknowledging their concerns, the better off you're going to be in building trust. They're going to like you, they're going to connect with you, and they're going to know, feel like they know you a bit better. So don't rush to the numbers or to your presentation. We do that by providing them with valuable solutions for their financial security. All right, so that's five tips I hope that you find valuable today. As always, as I said at the beginning of the video, my goal here is to share things with you, give you value in return for the time that you invest in being on my channel. Give me a thumbs up, thumbs down. If you don't like it, make me a comment. I read them all. And subscribe, hit that notification bell to get more notifications about videos that I do release. And again, I appreciate all of you taking the time to be here today. And God willing, I'll see you in the next video this coming Saturday. See ya.